verses 13 through 15. Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. When you get there, please stand to your feet in reverence to the word of the Lord. Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. I'm going to be reading this morning from the New International Version of the text. I'm going to ask that you read with us from the screens that are before you. If you're able, please stand. If God has given you strength, please stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. Hear now what God is saying. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I had now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. The word of God for the people of God, let the people say thanks be to God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We pray that God will amplify, first lady, we pray that God will amplify and then magnify his holy word so that we might be otherwise saved, sanctified, thank you, informed and transformed. Please keep your Bibles open. Keep your Bibles open and look again with me for a point of emphasis at the first part of verse number 13. Here's what it says. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Under the direction of the unction of the Holy Spirit, I want to put a tag on that portion of scripture this morning and preach from this thought, track number five, it's worth fighting for. <clears throat> it's worth fighting for. Come on, help me out real quick. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's worth fighting for. Now look at your other neighbor and say it like you really mean to say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's worth fighting for. My brothers and sisters, in the relatively new gospel song by Brian Courtney Wilson, the songwriter makes it clear that there are, in fact, some things worth fighting for songwriter testifies that the calling on his life is worth fighting for, that his peace and his family are worth fighting for, that his home and heaven and his praise are also worth fighting for. And I believe that this here again is another one of those songs that you and I ought to have in our spiritual playlist. For a song like this will remind you that what God has given you and what God is preparing to give you is truly worth fighting for. Okay, let me try it this way. The family that God has given you, the peace that God has given you, the joy and the praise that God has already given you, all of that is worth fighting for but also the breakthrough that's coming is worth fighting for. The healing that's coming and the increase that's coming and the victory that's coming is also worth fighting for. Hearing Jesus say, well done, when this life is over, I can't speak for nobody else, but as for me, that's worth fighting for. Here it is, God has done great things for you and God is preparing to do great things for you. It doesn't much matter who you are. It doesn't much matter how old you might be. If you're still breathing, if you're still here, if you're still kicking, what that ought to tell you is that God is yet preparing great things for you. And everything that God is preparing for you is absolutely and positively and definitely 
worth fighting for. If nothing else, if nothing else, the, the Jericho story ought to make it clear that God is not finished blessing you yet. If nothing else, the Jericho report ought to make it crystal clear that there are some blessings that God is yet preparing with your name written all over it. For those of you who know your Bible, then you already know that God had in fact promised to bless God's people with their own land. As a matter of fact, God's people called it the promised land simply because it was land that God had already promised. And it's here in the book of Joshua where God is actually about to keep his promise. For after wandering in the wilderness for some 40 years, God tells Joshua to go tell the people that the time has now come for them to take possession of the promised land. In other words, the time had now come for them, here it comes, to move from where they were to where God would have them to be. They had been in the wilderness long enough. They had been where they were long enough. God was now opening a new door for them, and in order for them to go through the door that God was now opening, they were going to have to get up and make a move by faith. And that's a prophetic word right there for somebody in this place, because somebody here has been sitting where you've been sitting long enough. Somebody here has been settling for the same old, same old long enough. Somebody here has been where you've always been long enough. God is opening a new door just for you. And the time has come for you to get up and make a move by faith and walk through the door that God has now opened just for you. Y'all still missing it. Let me try it this way. Far too many of us have grown comfortable with where we've always been. The people in the text had been where they had been for some 40 years. They're now knowing what we know about people. I'm sure that there were some folks sitting up in there who had grown comfortable with being in the wilderness. We all know people like this, people who say things like, this is how it's always been, and this is how we've been doing it for years. If it ain't broke, don't even try to fix it. But come here, let me tell you what I know. What I know is that when God says make a move, baby, you need to make a move. When God opens a door, baby, you need to walk through that door because you'll never discover what can be, and you never will discover what shall be if you sit where you've always been and do what you've always... I wish I had a witness in here. God, God, God instructs the people, watch, that the time has come for them to take possession of the promised land. God says the time has come for y'all to make a move by faith. So Joshua does what God tells him to do. He goes to the people and tells the people, get ready, for the time has come for us to move out of the wilderness and into the promised land. Joshua tells the people, y'all need to get yourself ready to go. Because God has now opened the door and is allowing us to take possession of the blessing that he's already prepared for us. But here it is. Here's the part I need you to catch. Pay attention. Because not only does Joshua tell the people that the time has come for them to make a move, he also tells the people that the time has come for them to get ready to put up a fight. Even though God had given the green light to move into the promised land, the possession of the promise wasn't going to come without a fight. Uh, the possession of the blessing wasn't going to come without a battle. Okay, let me try it this way. There was an enemy standing between them and all that God had for them. The enemy had built a wall and put it between them and the blessing that God had in store just for them. And because there was now an obstacle standing in the way of their blessing, Joshua got the people ready for battle for the blessing that God had for them was absolutely worth fighting for. Okay, let me try to keep it real because some of y'all still looking at me. Uh, uh, the enemy is not going to just sit back and let you stroll into your blessing. 
The enemy ain't going to just sit back and let you glide into what God has ordained for you to have. Let me try it this way. The enemy is not going to just sit back and do nothing as God blesses your family, as God blesses your career, as God blesses the church, as God blesses your household, as God blesses your life. No, if God is going to get the glory, through the blessing that he's ordained for you to already have, you can rest assured that the enemy is already lining up to block every blessing that the Lord has for you. And what that means is that you need to get ready to fight. You need to get ready to go old school. You need to put some Vaseline on your face. Take your earrings off. Crack your knuckles. Set your feet. And get ready to fight for everything that God is. there anybody in the household today who's not ashamed to lift up your hands and declare on this day what God has for me and mine is worth fighting for? I'm preaching to myself. Uh, I, I stopped by to tell somebody. What God has for you, it's worth fighting for. You need to rewind that and play it again. I said what God has for you is worth fighting for. Come here. Now is not the time for the saints to be scared. Now is not the time for cowardly Christians. No, now is the time for every believer to get ready to go to battle. Now is the time for the faithful to fight for everything that God has with your name on. Here it is. You got to fight through your doubts. You got to fight through your fears. You got to fight through every discouragement. And you got to fight through every obstacle that the enemy puts in your way. Because what God has for you on the other side of the doubt and on the other side of the fear and on the other side of the discouragement and on the other side of the obstacle is absolutely worth fighting for. I wish I had a witness here. Now watch. Before... We get too far ahead of ourselves. We need to understand, watch, that the weapons that we need to use in the fight are not conventional, but rather they're spiritual. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the tearing down of strongholds. In other words, here it is. The only weapon that you and I will need in the fight is God. Let me say that one more time. I said the only weapon that you and I are going to need in the fight is God. Here's why. Because last I checked, God is still able to pull down strongholds. God is still able to bring down every wall in your life. God is still able to remove every obstacle in your life. I believe there's somebody up in here who can testify that the only reason you're still here and the only reason that the enemy hasn't taken you down is because God is able to remove every obstacle in your life. Here it is, the good news on this day is that God is the only weapon that you and I will need when it comes to fighting for what God has for us. Here it is, since we got to fight for what God has for us. Here it is, we need to learn how to fight knowingly. Come on, let the church say knowingly. In other words, watch, you got to know <laughs> That you know that you know, that you know that you know, that God is with you in the fight. Y'all missing it. Let me show it to you in the text. Watch, watch, watch. The Bible says in the beginning of verse 13, I'm in the Bible. 
that, that Joshua, watch, is standing near Jericho. He, 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 he's in the very proximity of the blessing that God has ordained for him. He's, he's standing next to the blessing that God has written his name on. So there he is, pay attention, standing there. He's looking at what God has for him. And what he sees is a wall or an obstacle that's standing in his way. And considering human nature, I believe that as he stood there initially, he began to look and wonder how. How am I going to get through the wall and the obstacle that's standing between me and what God has for me? Come here, have you ever been there? I'm talking about that time when you looked at your bills and then looked at your money and wondered how. Come here, I'm talking about that time when you looked at where you were and where you needed to be and wondered, I guess I had a witness here. He, 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 he's standing there looking at the obstacle and wondering how. And while he looked and wondered, the Bible says that all of a sudden, in his vantage and in his view, he looked up and saw something that wasn't there before. He looked up and saw a man standing there with him. I need some Bible readers to help me right here. And the man is standing there with a sword in his hand. And in a very real sense, pay attention, it was at that very moment when God showed Joshua exactly how God himself was about to work things out for his good. Y'all missing it? Watch. Pay attention. Because here's where the problem kicks in. Watch, watch. Joshua doesn't recognize that the man in front of him is actually the Lord. Watch. In, in biblical studies, what's happening at this point in the text is called a theophany. And a theophany, watch, is when God himself shows up in human form. But here's the problem. While God has showed up at the scene, Joshua can't even discern that God is with him. And here's the truth. Pay attention. It's hard to see how to handle your obstacles when you can't discern that God is with you. It's hard to see how you're going to win the fight when you can't even discern that God is with you at the fight. Watch. God himself has shown up at the wall. And not only did he show up, he shows up with a sword. Y'all still missing yourself, Q, in his hand. But Joshua is clueless. He can't even see that his help has already arrived. And he can't see it because he doesn't know that God is with him. But here it is, watch. Joshua doesn't know that God is with him until God starts to speak. It's right there in the text. I'm in verse 13. Because God, because Joshua says to the man, hey you, you with the sword, are you for us or for our enemies? Come here. If you grew up like I grew up, you don't walk up on nobody with a knife on their hands. I, I believe he was back a few feet. And he said, hey, you with the knife in your hand, are you for us or are you against us? And right there, that's when God himself starts to speak. God says, I'm neither. I am the 
commander of this thing and I need you to know that now I have come. In other words, what God is saying in verse 14 is know this, Joshua, you ain't going into the fight all by yourself. I showed up with a sword in my hand. I'm showing up because I'm ready to pick a fight. <laughs> I'm showing up <laughs> so I can show you <laughs> that you ain't in this thing by yourself. <laughs> I'm here to go into the battle uh, with you. Uh, and all that I'm telling, trying to tell you, child of God, uh, is that you need to know uh, that you know that you know uh, that you're never fighting all by yourself. Uh, the Lord God Almighty uh, is already at the scene. Uh, he's already at the wall. Uh, he's already near your obstacle uh, with a sword in his hand. Uh, and he's ready to go to battle with y'all not missing it uh okay some time ago I'm, I'm 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 on facebook and i see this video i see this video of a young buffalo trying to do battle against a pack of lionesses the lionesses overwhelmed him it looked like it was all over but then all of a sudden a whole herd of water buffalo showed up at the scene and suddenly the whole fight began to shift for the young buffalo was no longer fighting by himself. He had a whole army of buffalo fighting against the lion with him. Come in, let me try to tell you what I'm trying to tell you. You ain't fighting by yourself. God and the heavenly hosts are already encamping all around you. The fight may seem difficult, but if you hold on a little while longer, God will see you through. Oh, is there anybody up in here who know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you ain't got to fight by yourself. God will step into the fight and give you, I wish I had somebody in here who can testify that the only reason you're here is because he gave you the victory. I'm done. Here it is, watch, 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 watch. What God has for you, it's worth fighting for. Here it is. Only weapon that you need in the fight is God. Y'all still missing it? I said the only weapon that you're going to need in the fight is my microphone on. Is God. And what that means, here it is, when it comes to fighting for what God has for us, you got to fight knowingly. Let me drop this last one on you. I'm going to sit down. But you also got to fight. Here it comes. Faithfully. Watch, watch. In other words, watch. You got to know that you know that you know that God is with you in the fight. Here it comes. You also have to faithfully do what God says while you fight. Watch, watch, watch. Hear me, church. Listen. You'll never see what God is going to do next until you're willing what God is to do what God is telling you to do now. Whew, let me try it again. Uh, you'll never see what God is going to do next until you're willing to do what he's telling you to do. Okay, y'all still missing. Let me try one more time. You, you'll never see what God is going to do next until you're willing to do what he's telling you to do now, okay, some of y'all deep, let me show it to you, watch. In preparation for the fight that was ahead of him, God gave Joshua a simple command in verse 15. God said, Joshua, take off your sandals for the place that you're standing. I need some Bible readers to help me here. It's holy. Y'all see this in your Bible. It, it was a simple thing. He said, he said, hey, Joshua, take your shoes off because where you're standing 
is holy. And the book says that Joshua faithfully did what God said. And now, watch, because he did what God said then, he was now positioned to see what God was about to do next. Y'all still missing it. Watch, watch, watch. I'm, I'm going to lose half of y'all right here. God has already given you and I some simple things to do right now. God says pray. God said serve. God said praise. He done gave us some simple stuff to do. But the problem is, if you're not faithfully doing what he already told you to do, you'll never get into position to see what God is going to do next in your life. I'm preaching better than you're letting on. Watch, watch. I, I, believe, I believe that God gives us simple commands now to see if we have enough faith to handle the difficult stuff that's going to come next. Watch, because if we cannot demonstrate that we're willing to do the simple stuff, that lets God know that he cannot trust us when he tells us to do some stuff that won't make a whole lot of sense in the natural. Here it is. When it comes to fighting for what God has for you, every now and then, God is going to ask you to do something that will defy logic and seem absolutely ridiculous. Can I testify? Uh, in, in 2004, uh, back then I, I, I was the global director and chief information security officer for the Coca-Cola company. I, I was... I was, I was rubbing elbows with the elite. I was making a whole lot of money. I ain't bragging, I'm just testifying. And then one day, God said, I want you to quit your job, go to seminary, and preach my word. That day, I wrote my boss a three-sentence resignation letter and quit. Everybody who knew me said, that boy done lost his mind. You are absolutely insane. But what the people didn't understand is that I was fighting for what God had for me. And because I was faithful, God has blessed me to do better now than I was doing back then. And all that I'm trying to tell you is, is that every now and then, when it comes to fighting for what God has for you, he's going to tell you to do something that at first will defy logic and seem absolutely ridiculous. Y'all still ain't believing me. Come on, let me show it to you in the text. Watch. The Bible says that the enemy had built a wall around Jericho and that the wall was now standing between God's people and God's promise. So Joshua told the people, pay attention, us need to get ready to fight. Because what God has for us on the other side of the wall is worth fighting for. But then Joshua says something that made absolutely no sense. He said, Here's how God wants us to fight. God wants us to march around the wall for six days and don't say a word. And then on the seventh day, he wants us to march around that wall seven times. And after the seventh time, somebody need to play a horn because then at the sound of the horn, Everybody got to open up your mouth and shout. Come here. In my Holy Ghost imagination, I can hear the people saying, now let me get this right. You, you, you want us to march up to an armed enemy 
and just march around a wall and think that our voices are going to bring down said wall. I can hear Joshua say, I know this sounds crazy. I know this is not the conventional way to go into battle. I know and understand that this might seem ridiculous. I know that this may go against the grain and defy logic. But here's what God said. God said, march around the wall for six days. And don't anybody say nothing. And on the seventh day, we're going to march around this wall seven times. And at the sound of the trumpet, even though it might sound ridiculous, all of us are going to open up our mouths and shout like we've lost our minds. And the Bible says that Joshua and the people faithfully did exactly what God said. They marched around that old wall. And at the sound of that old trumpet, all of them opened up their mouths. And all of them began to shout. And because they faithfully did the ridiculous, God then stepped in and did the miraculous. For the Bible says that at the shout of their voices, God released God's power. And God's power then brought down that wall. Is there anybody up in the house? on today uh, who needs some walls to come down in your life uh, is there anybody in the house on today uh, who's standing in the need of a miracle uh, is there anybody in the house on today uh, who needs some obstacles moved out your way uh, if that's your testimony uh, here's what you need to do uh, you need to do whatever God says uh, and you need to do it by faith uh, cause when you move by faith uh, God will release his power Power, huh? And when his power is released, huh? walls will come tumbling down. Huh? Is there anybody here huh? who can testify huh? that he's brought down some walls huh? in your life? Huh? Now, won't he do it? Come on. Huh? Won't he do it? Huh? Come on. Say it.